Hey everyone, welcome to the ranking, and welcome to my ranking of F. Gary Gray's movies. Yes, F. Gary Gray is a fantastic filmmaker. I've been a fan of his work for quite some time, and I love his movies. He's directed seven films in total, and I'm here to rank here to rank all seven of his films from my least favorite to my favorites. So yeah, let's get started. Here's my ranking of F. Gary Gray's movies. Alright, coming in at number seven is Be Cool. That's exactly what this movie is not. Cool. I cannot stand this movie. This movie is absolutely awful. This has John Travolta, Cedric the Entertainer, Andre 3000, Christina Milian, Harvey Keitel, Steven Tyler, Uma Thurman. A lot of actors in this movie. Some are talented, some not so much. This movie is so unfunny. It's a sequel to Get Shorty. Why did they make a sequel to Get Shorty? It makes no goddamn sense. Get Shorty is a great movie. You don't need a fucking sequel. Instead of the movie industry, it's about the music industry. Chili Palmer, the ex Shylock, he wants to get out of the movie industry because they're tired. Because he's tired of them being dishonest and stuff. Whatever. He wants to join the music industry, so he joins Uma Thurman and her label and stuff, and he wants to help the singer, played by Christina Milian, he wants to help her get famous and stuff, but then he has to deal with these music industry crime guys, Harvey Keitel and Vince Vaughn, who thinks he's black, and my god, Vince Vaughn is so unfunny in this movie. And then he's got Cedric the Entertainer, this hip-hop artist, and the studio owes him money, and then there's stuff with the Russian mob, so many side stories, and none of them really matters, none of them, some of them don't make sense, and it's just so unfunny. That is the biggest flaw with this movie. It's so not funny. This movie isn't funny. Get Shorty not only had some great writing and really funny comedy and some great performances. Rene Russo, Danny DeVito, Gene Hackman, John Travolta, they were all so great. No one's good in this movie. No, no one's good. No one gives a good performance. They actually rip a lot of the jokes off from Get Shorty and they just put it in this movie. I don't know why they did that again. Just It's almost like a rehash of Get Shorty, but it's the music industry. Uma Thurman and John Travolta even do the Pulp Fiction thing. It's, the, it's them two dancing to a song, but instead of a classic pop song, they do it to a Black IP song. It's supposed to be an homage to Pulp Fiction. I get it. It was kind of cool, but at the same time, not very needed. It's just like, hey, Pulp Fiction was famous and stuff, and yeah, no one's funny in this movie. This movie is so unbearable to watch. I hate, hate this movie so much. I really don't like any of the performances. I can't stand the story. I don't think F. Gary Gray did a good job directing this movie. It's not a well-written movie, and it's just not funny. It's not funny. And a waste of Dwayne Johnson as well. Like, he's not funny either. No one's funny in this movie. This movie just sucks. Hands down the worst movie F. Gary Gray has done. Coming number six is Law Abiding Citizen. Now, I actually know people that are actually big fans of this movie. I am not. I do not like this movie. Jamie Foxx and Gerard Butler are in this movie, and they're not that great. Basically, the story is about this guy played by Gerard Butler. He lost his family to these guys who murdered them, and basically, they didn't get the right sentence. So, basically, ten years later, Gerard Butler takes justice in his own hands. He kills the two murderers, and basically, he wants to come after all the people that were involved with the case with his family. He wants to kill the judge, the lawyers, Jamie Foxx, and all the people that tried to defend him or prosecute. He tries to murder them all and stuff, and yeah, it's not, it's not as interesting as it sounds. It sounds interesting and cool. There actually are a couple cool scenes, like, you know, the, when the judge answers the phone and her fucking head blows off. That was kind of funny. There are a few scenes, that I get, Gerard Butler has a few funny one-liners in this movie, but it's not very original. The stories like this have been done before. The pacing isn't very good. The acting isn't all that great. Gerard Butler is okay at times. Jamie Foxx is awful in this movie. The story is so beyond predictable. You even know how he's doing it. It's very predictable, this movie. And it's not very interesting. It just, it's so by the books. The, the story isn't original. You know exactly where it's going. It's not very fascinating. You don't get attached to any of these characters. It's just, it's just kind of blah. Like, the movie tries to be, like, violent and gritty and show how cool and badass it is, and it really doesn't succeed at that. If Gary Gray was trying with this movie, I could see there was effort into this one. Just, for me, it didn't work. Coming number five is Set It Off. Set It Off is actually a pretty darn good movie. It's uh, basically about female bank robbers, and that's basically the gist. That's all you guys need to know. Going into this movie, no spoilers. I will not dare spoil the ending. 
Oh my god, it's so sad. Uh, Jada Pickett Smith, Vivica Fox, Queen Latifah, all in this movie, all give great performances. There is some dark comedy, there's some really intense bank and bank robbing sequences. The ending climax to the film is really intense as shit, and you're just like, oh my god, what's gonna happen? There are a few problems I have here and there. There's a few story issues that I'm like, wait, wait, that doesn't make sense. And a couple scenes that I just don't think it worked. And sometimes the pacing is a bit off. But it's still a really good, enjoyable bank robbing movie. And I highly recommend it. Coming number four is The Italian Job. Yes, a remake of The Italian Job. The original Italian Job is a good movie. This one is just as good, actually. It's a very enjoyable film. Mark Wahlberg, Charles Theron, Donald Sutherland, Edward Norton, Jason Statham, Moe Steff, Seth Green, all in this movie, all good. Everyone's good in this movie. Basically, it's about these bank robbers who basically robbed all these gold pieces in Italy, and basically Edward Norton screws them over, takes the gold, and basically tries to kill them all. He thinks they're all dead, and a year later, they come back, and they want to steal their gold back from Edward Norton. This movie's a great action-adventure thrill ride. It's fun. It's entertaining. That's basically all it is. There are problems here and there, but... For what it is, it's good. It's an entertaining action-adventure movie. And if you like heist movies, then you'll like this one. Coming number three is Friday. It's Friday! You got knocked the fuck out. Chris, Chris Tucker in this movie as Smokey is amazing. He steals the entire film. Ice Cube is great, and he wrote this movie. Very good job writing this movie. F. Gary Gray's direction is also fantastic. It's solidly executed, wonderfully paced. The comedy is so funny in this movie. Oh, I can't even spoil the jokes. This jokes this very Smokey's hilarious. I love Smokey. Smokey is so funny. One of my favorite scenes is a scene that involves underwear. Very funny. And then another favorite scene in my involves a cheating husband. I think you all know what I'm talking about. Really funny scene. And yeah, again, the performances are really great in this movie. Neil Long is in this movie. She's even very good. They actually deal with real subjects too, like abuse and drugs and stuff. And it's, and it's handled in a very mature way and also in a very comedic way. The comedy is solid. It's a stellar comedy and it just works. It's so funny. It's so well acted and it's just so damn entertaining and I just love it. Coming number two is Straight Outta Compton. Yes, Straight Outta Compton, what? This movie's awesome. It's about fucking N.W.A. and it's amazing. How F. Gary Gray directed this movie was fantastic. These actors really look like their roles. Like, I thought I was actually watching Ice Cube, Dr. Dre, Easy e right on the screen. Jason Mitchell, wow. He is amazing as Easy e especially the scene when he's in the hospital. Oh my god, just Freaking heartbreaking, just heart wrenching. It's so freaking tragic. You're like, don't kill Easy E, but you know how the story goes. They kill Easy E. It's sad. I loved this movie. The performances. Paul Giamatti's even very good in this movie. Everyone's fantastic in this movie. The writing, the direction, the music is kick ass, and how they told the story in a very realistic and very accurate way. There's a few things they missed off, which I actually heard. I don't really know much of the story of NWA, but I did hear they left a lot of things out, but I had no problem with it. This movie was fucking awesome. It was so freaking great, and yeah, buy the Blu-ray, buy the Blu-ray, and watch the director's cut. It's even more awesome to watch. It's funny at times, it's very deep, it's very dramatic, it's very emotional, and if you love hip-hop music and you love NWA, you're gonna adore this movie, and I certainly adored it. And my number one favorite F. Gary Gray movie is The Negotiator. Ever since when I was younger, when I saw this movie, I think I saw this movie when I was like about 11 or 12, I just loved this movie. I have loved this movie ever since I first watched it. It's just so good. I love this movie. I think everything in this movie just freaking works. Is there problems? Yes, but I don't care. Everything works for me. I love, I love this movie. Samuel Jackson and uh, Kevin Spacey are both amazing in this movie. It's basically about a cop played by Samuel Jackson who is a negotiator. And basically, he gets framed for a murder he did not do. His partner died, and they're blaming him for the murder. So basically, he goes to this police precinct, and he takes them all hostage, because he wants to find out the real answers of what's happening. And he takes all these people hostage in this police precinct. And basically, Kevin Spacey, as Chris Sabian, I think his name is, he basically has to talk him down. A negotiator has to negotiate with a fellow negotiator. And he has to find out what's really happening, what police officers are really corrupt, who's involved with this murder, and is Samuel Jackson telling the truth? 
He's telling the truth. It's, it's fucking obvious. But I love this movie. I love the dynamics. I love these characters. I love the twists and turns. Samuel Jackson and Kevin Spacey are both incredible in this movie. Every converse, every conversation they have when they're talking on the phone is fantastic. I always thought Inside Man did it the best with Clive Owen and Denzel Washington. But I like it a little more than The Negotiator. I love the dynamics of Samuel Jackson and Kevin Spacey's character. And I love that Kevin Spacey is like an honest cop. He actually wants to find out the truth and actually help Samuel Jackson's character. Uh, Paul Giamatti is also in this movie. He's really great. Matt Walsh is great in this movie, too. Everyone's fantastic. Everyone's so good in this movie. It's so well directed, so well written. There is some really genuine, intense scenes, and it's fantastic. I love this movie. It's hands down my favorite F. Gary Gray movie. So yeah, that was my ranking of all of F. Gary Gray's movies, from my least favorite to my favorite. So in the comment section below, please tell me what is your ranking of all of F. Gary Gray's movies, from your least favorite to your favorite. Comment below, let me know. And as always, if it's video, please like, subscribe to this channel, and join the dark side.